Welcome to this week's webisode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin, and this is Katie Hartley. And of course, we're going to take a look back at what's been going on this week. Lots to talk about, Kendra. First off, the Coyotes looking like the real deal, just moving right along in the playoffs, getting ready to take on the LA Kings in the Western Conference Finals, and also staring down what could possibly be a new owner for the team, Former, former Sharks owner Greg Jamison uh, looking at purchasing the team from the NHL. But Kendra, it kind of seems like this might be too too good to be true. It does. It almost does seem like it's too good to be true. I mean, here the Coyotes have waited forever just to advance in the playoffs, and they've waited forever for an owner, and are they going to happen at the same time? For Coyotes fans and for the team, and of course the longtime members of the team like Shane Doan, I hope both happen. I don't think they're going to win the Stanley Cup playoffs, but I think they're going to be pretty happy just about where they're at advancing to the Western Conference Finals. So I think it's I think it's a good thing. I think that everybody's got to be excited about it. And if it's real, I hope it's I hope it's true because I don't think they would go to the lengths to you to have this whole press conference and everything and bring Bettman in and, and bring the owner in. The you know yeah, I, in, I don't think they would do that. In my opinion, it, it looks like this is you know this is just to 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 be done should be soon mm -hmm. um, but I think this getting an, an owner for the Phoenix Coyotes that that'll solidify this being a hockey town I think we've talked about it before but uh, they need an owner for this team for this to be a hockey town I don't think that they need a, a Stanley Cup play you know championship basically cha championship mm -hmm. would be nice but I think what they need more is an, is an owner yeah. right now. Goldwater Institute, don't get in the way. That's my warning. <laughs> well, next up, uh, the Suns might not be in the news for beginning the playoffs, but Steve Nash still making the news. Uh, he is the new GM of the Canadian men's senior team. However, he still has his other job as a point guard in the NBA. So, Kendra, do you think this is a distraction? I don't think so. I love it. I mean, first of all, a lot of these guys play on the Olympic team, which is probably... Uh, you know, as we know, is a lot of training, a lot of time. So he's basically working for the Canadian men's national team as the GM. I think it's just what Canada needs. I mean, their men's basketball team is terrible. Um, they need a name to attach it. He's very passionate about it. He always goes back to Canada and, and gives back. So I think it's great. I don't think it's going to take away from his. And besides, what is he, 38 now? I mean, well, a he's kind of, of winding down anyway. He's got to figure out what he wants to do when he retires. A couple of things that I thought were interesting is he's not going to be paid for the position. Right, which is and, awesome. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And also he's going to be looking for a head coach. So, I mean, he still has some work to do. It's going to require his attention, but sure. I don't think – uh, I don't think it'll be a distraction during the season. I think it'll be good for him to stay busy during the summer. <laughs> good for him and good for Canada. I think it's a win-win. Moving on to some NFL stuff. Former Eagles and Vikings receiver Chris Carter admitted on ESPN Radio that he also participated in bounties while he was uh, an active NFL player. Uh, after all the Saints were penalized for participating in this bounty program, now Chris Carter comes out and says that he I think did it's, it I too. don't think it's a big deal. You I don't think, think it's it, a big deal I don't at think all. It's, and no, I don't. I don't. There's nothing even close, at least to what he's admitting to, to what was done with the Saints. He basically went on the show and said, hey, if some guy before the game came up and threatened me, which he said has happened to him, I'm going to end your career, I'm going to take you out, he would go to his lineman and say, keep an eye on this guy and, quote, legally hit him and keep him in check. Offensive linemen, you know, trying to go after the guys that are going after the receivers and going after the running back. So to me, it doesn't seem like it's nearly the same level as what the Saints did. So honestly, I don't think it's a big deal. And I guarantee Chris Carter wishes he hadn't said that. See, I, and I, I, I think that you're right with that. Chris Carter, keep your mouth shut. There's already too much attention on the Saints bounty gate. I think that what he's doing is just drawing even more immediate attention and scrutiny to it. If anything, the Saints want to put this to rest. They don't want to talk about it anymore. The NFL wants to put and it to him rest. And for to come out yeah. and say, well, I did it when mm -hmm. I was an active NFL player. It's like, dude, this is a time to just be quiet. Don't talk about it. I think, if anything, he's just made the situation worse because he's now saying, well, it's really okay, and people do it, you know, other teams do it all the time. That is their job. If he mm -hmm. said, well, just keep an eye out, I just mm -hmm. told my lineman, exactly. to that's their job. Yeah. That's what they get paid to do anyways. Well, he probably was saying it kind of tongue-in-cheek, but it wasn't the time to say tongue-in-cheek, and it totally got blown out of proportion. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, yeah. I don't, obviously, we don't know there's not an investigation, but either way, bad move, Chris Carter, and I guarantee the NFL wants to shove this right under the rug. They don't like it either. Yeah, no, it's really But on a lighter note. Yeah, keep, Chris Carter, keep your mouth shut. But we'll wrap with some fun things. Uh, the Kentucky Derby was this past weekend. I'll have another winning the first leg of the Triple Crown. But what I want to talk about, Kendra, is the Kentucky Derby 
fashion. What do you give it? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, first of all, I give the weird hats a thumbs down. <laughs> the ones with the birds and all that junk. I mean, now that one's pretty cool. I like that one. I like the whole big hat concept. I think that the women look really regal. I think it's a really cool kind of fashion statement. And the fact that it only happens once a year and it's for this, I think makes it awesome. But the, the ones that try to go too over the top and weird, thumbs down. Plus, they probably spent like a grand on the ugly hat. Oh, and when I are you ever going to wear it again? I love it. I love the Kentucky oh. Derby fashion. I give it two thumbs up. I think it's so great. I wish I could dress you like, like that. You like all of every the hats? Day. Everything. The weirder, the better. It's totally Lady Gaga. I love it. Wow. That's, <laughs> wow. I don't know. The suit right there is way worse than the hat. All right, Kendra. We are out of time. Thanks for joining us this week on The Better Half. Until next week, you can follow her on Twitter at Kendra620. You can follow me at FunKatie620. We'll see you next week for another webisode of The Better Half.